Okie dokie. In this problem, they give us the growth rate of some algae modeled by this differential equation. They say it doubles every 11 hours. Initially, there are 200. And so right away, we see the uh, differential equation, which we'll solve using separation of variables. And they tell us it doubles in size every 11 hours. I think we'll use that later. But the initially, there are 200. That's just like saying when t equals 0, p equals 200. So it's our initial value that we will use to essentially solve for, for c, our constant. And then we'll use this doubles every 11 hours to help us out later on. And then they say if we begin at 6 p.m. on August 5th, when, so we're looking for a time, is the earliest necessary 200,000 algae cells, uh, when are they going to be ready, basically. So let's jump to it. Let's start by solving the differential equation using separation of variables. We'll divide by p uh, or multiply by 1 over p on, the, on both sides, giving us this on the left side while simultaneously multiplying the dt to the right side. We have them separated. Now we will integrate both sides like normal. We get natural log of absolute value of p. <clears throat> and we get k times t. Keep in mind the antiderivative of a constant is just that constant plus t. Or sorry, that constant times t. And now we add plus c like usual. We can go ahead and make e the base of both sides simplifying this whole thing down to c e to the k t again the uh, the plus c in the exponent can be rewritten like this whole thing could be rewritten like so and then e to the c is just a constant and so we've just moved that constant to the front all right so this the nice thing about this problem is that this is the function you'll always use. This is the solution you'll always get because the differential equation they give you is always this. So keep that in mind. You can sort of skip the first step if you want to. Just jump straight to this. So now let's use the initial condition. Um, so if we plug in 0 for t and 200 for p, what do we get? So 0 for t gives us k times 0, which is 0, e to the 0, which is 1, c times 1 is just c. So c equals 200. Another nice thing about this is that the initial value they give you is always the c value out in front. It always works out that the coefficient of the e term in these types of exponential growth or decay problems is your initial value value. This constant is your initial value always. So we have 200e to the kt. Then we use this. It doubles in size every 11 hours. So what that means is we can set up another kind of ordered pair situation like this. So if it doubles in 11 hours or every 11 hours, we can say that when t equals 11, then the population or the, what is it, population? Yeah, population is doubled from its initial 200. So now it's 400. So we do the same process. Plug in 400 for P. We have it equal to 200 E to the K, which we don't know, times 11. And so what we'll do is solve this for K. Once we have that, then we'll solve the last question they ask. So <clears throat> we start by... So we, we have the goal of isolating this k on the right side. So we start by dividing by 200. That would get rid of it there and then give us 2 on this side. We want to eliminate the e by taking the natural log of both sides, something I don't think we've done recently, but we've been constantly doing it with sort of the opposite approach. When we have ln, we want to make e the base. But when we have e, we want to take the ln of both sides. So ln and e cancel, leaving us actually with just 11k. So then we divide by 11 to get k by itself. So what we'll do is open Desmos and solve that 
in here. So ln over 2, or sorry, ln of 2 over 11, 0 0.063. So this is our k value. So we're doing great so far. We have our k value. Now the goal is to find the time when 200,000 algae cells will be ready. So what that's saying is if the population has achieved 200,000, what must the time t be? Then we will use that time and add it on to our initial you know, start time there. Initial start, that's pretty redundant, but it's, uh, you know, in terms of the time and day uh, given. So, anyway, so we have 200,000 is our p value. So, again, we're setting up, where'd it go? Where'd I move it? Um, I guess, oh, there it is, yep. So, we're plugging in 200,000 for p. We still have 200 e to the k, which we now know is 0 0.063 and the goal is to solve for this t so let's jump to it same exact solution process we divide by 200 to cancel it here and dividing 200,000 by 200 I want to say that's just 1,000 we get rid of some zeros 2,000 divided by 2 is 1,000 that's pretty good so we have 1,000 equals e to the 0 0.063 t we can take the natural log of both sides, eliminating the E there, and then we're just left with this. So we can divide by 0 0.063 on both sides to get T by itself. Ln of 1,000 divided by 0 0.063, and we get 109.6. All right. So now, how do we use this? Keep in mind, our time units are in hours, and we know that just from the initial, like, 11 hours information they gave us. And so, we know that um, 200,000 cells will be ready 109.6 we could probably round that to the nearest hour the whole hour so 110 hours it'll be ready 110 after hours after the 6 p.m on august 5th so let's see if we can figure this out let's figure out how many days and hours 110 hours is equivalent to <laughs> So we'll do 110 divided by 24 hours. That'll give us 4.58 days. 4.58 days. Four, you know, 5833. Three. And so let's see if we can do that. 55 over 12. And so when we divide 55 and 12, what do we get? Actually, and now let's do it like this. So 0.588. We want to figure out how many hours into the day 0 0.58, 0 0.58333333 is, right? So it's over half, like it's over 12 hours. So it's like four days, 12 hours plus something, right? So maybe it's four days and 13 hours. So maybe 13 over 20, oh gosh, sorry, 13 over 24, and, oh my gosh, I just ruined this, here, hold on, 5.8, okay, maybe how about 14 over 24, okay, that's it, and so what I just did here was, since we knew that 110 divided by 24 was 4.583, we knew that 110 hours was equivalent to 4 days, but then plus this extra decimal. So what I'm trying to figure out is how many hours is equivalent to 0.58333 uh, days. And so we did 14 divided by 24, and that matched 0.58333. So 14 hours out of 24 hours. So what we have is... 
one ten hours is equivalent to four days and fourteen hours. We want to know what is four days and fourteen hours past August fifth. So let's do August fifth plus four days. That's six p.m. on six p.m. on August. 9th, just adding the four days, right? So now we want to add 14 hours to the <laughs> to the uh, 6 p.m. So, well, 14 hours is 6 hours plus 8 hours. The reason I broke up 6 and 8 is because if we add 6 hours to 6 p.m., it's going to take us to midnight or 12 a.m. on August 10th and then plus eight hours will take us all the way to 8 a.m. on August 10th. <laughs> so that is our answer F. Sorry I'm just laughing because I'm doing it I feel like I'm doing a terrible job explaining this but I hope this makes sense um, the video is probably very long, so I'm going to do a second example and try to do it a little smoother in the next video. Uh, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions on this breakdown, please let me know, but I'll try to do it a little smoother in the next one. So feel free to check it out.